Welcome. Water cooling your PC has grown in popularity, but the cost and effort required can deter builders. In this episode, we will build a high performing custom water cooling loop with high quality parts for under $350 that can fit directly into an existing build. For the base, we are using a mid to high end gaming build when water cooling can be a viable upgrade to the existing parts. Stay tuned while we unbox and build this complete custom water cooling solution right now, including the CPU and GPU water blocks, the pump reservoir combo unit, radiator, fans, fittings, tubing, and coolant. This is the Vector Network, and let's begin. GPU water blocks are typically manufactured by either Watercool, EKWB, Optimus, AlphaCool, Corsair, Bixkey, or Barrow. Some are as expensive as the total budget of our loop. Check out some of the videos linked in the description to compare some of the water blocks for these brands. For the video card, we have an RTX 3080 from Gigabyte. This 3080 model is the Aorus Extreme Water Force WB. We did a teardown of the factory leak detection water block. In this build, we are adding a new water block to this card. To cool the video card, we are using the AlphaCool Ice Block Aurora Acryl GPX and RTX 3080 Aurorus Master Extreme. While not listed as an officially supported model, this water block will fit the Aorus Extreme Water Force PCB as it shares the same layout as the Master Extreme air-cooled versions. This is a full front coverage water block with the water flow designed to cover the processor, VRMs, and memory. It has a cable for ARGB lighting and comes with a metal backplate. With the continued popularity of the NVIDIA 30 series, this was purchased from $96 and is 29% of the $345 total cost of the custom loop. Details in the description. While higher priced water blocks are tempting, it is important to get the most expensive part under 30% of the total budget as there are several types of parts needed to complete the custom loop. Keep in mind, any other video card and water block combo can be used here instead and the rest of the loop will work the same. For installation, the one millimeter thick front side thermal pads are first. Peeling off the plastic film on both sides before placing it on the cold plate with the PCB. Let's apply the Noctua MTH2 thermal paste to the RTX 3080. And then we can place the PCB directly on top of the water block followed by four Phillips head screws around the processor in a crisscross pattern to apply pressure more evenly. Then we can peel and place the backside thermal pads. These are all between two and three millimeters thick. And then we can place the metal backplate directly on top of the PCB, followed by six Phillips head screws. CPU water blocks can range in price to nearly that of GPU blocks. The Optimus Signature V3 was tested to be the best performer, but at the cost of $269, it is beyond the point of diminishing returns. To cool the 6-core Intel i5-12400F, we are using the AlphaCool Ice Block Aurora XP3 Light Plexi version. This is compatible with most Intel and AMD sockets, including LGA1700 and AM4, respectively. The AlphaCool XP3 water block has a simple design, an acrylic top, a nickel plate, a copper coal plate, and a cable for ARGB lighting. It was purchased for $41 and accounts for 12% of the total cost of this $345 custom loop. Keep in mind, it is also possible to first only add either the GPU or CPU water block and air cool the other component. This can reduce costs or allow for more of the budget to be spent on an individual item. The installation begins by applying the foam square to the metal backplate, followed by four long bolts, each with plastic washers. Then we can drop the Z690i motherboard with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory directly on top, followed by four plastic washers, and then four metal nuts. Then we can apply the Noctua NTH2 thermal paste, followed by the water block with a metal bracket, and then another four metal washers. Then four metal springs.
and then four metal thumb screws in the crisscross pattern to apply pressure more evenly. The pump reservoir combo unit is next. Inside most custom loop units, either a D5 or DDC pump. These are both standard for water cooling and the D5 is generally preferred in builds where there is enough space. The solution for this loop, Barrel D5 PWM 18 watt pump. This pump can be combined with the Barrel 130 millimeter reservoir tank to serve as a single component in the custom loop. Keep in mind, a Barrel radiator adapter is also needed. The total for this combo is $90 and is 26% of the total cost. Let's put together the unit by starting with the 18 watt D5 PWM pump. We can slide the metal barrel plate over the cables and then we can drop the pump into the metal housing. Next, we have the acrylic pump top. Drop a clear rubber O-ring into the reservoir and then screw the pump top into the pump housing. Drop in another clear rubber O-ring and then screw in the 130 millimeter long coolant tank. Then we can drop another clear rubber O-ring into the reservoir top, followed by the acrylic inlet tube. And then screw the top onto the reservoir tank. Let's secure the included black mounting plate with four hex socket screws. Then we can add the barrel radiator adapter and secure it with two bolts and nuts. This is a solid unit and judging by the build, I expect it to perform well. To connect our parts, the choices are hard tubing, which is typically either acrylic or PETG, or soft tubing, which is usually clear silicone or opaque EPDM rubber. While hard tubing has a distinct look and feel, soft tubing is typically less expensive and easier to use and service, so we'll be using it for this build. The soft tubing is 10mm inner diameter and 13mm outer diameter in size, so we will be using compression fittings in the same size. We'll use two barrel compressions soft tubing fittings per component. Watercool labels these barrel fittings as top rated and sells them for about $4 each, which is already a low price. An even better price is available directly from Barrel's official store. I ordered 10 for $12 or about $1 each. Keep in mind, while soft tubing is flexible, that doesn't mean it can bend in any manner. For this build, we did not use any optional 90 degree adapters, but they can be used as an option to make runs easier to manage. Let's add two compression 10ID 13OD fittings to the GPU water block. For the radiator, we are using the largest and thickest radiator within the budget that reasonably fits in the case. Barrel has a 360 millimeter triple fan copper radiator that is 40 millimeters thick for $53 directly from the Barrel official store. Buy with the fittings and reservoir pump combo to save on shipping. It is important that the radiator is clean before installation, so let's flush it with distilled water. Once satisfied, we can secure our Barrel reservoir pump combo unit onto the radiator with four hex screws. Let's add another pair of compression fittings. For fans, we have a five pack of Arctic P12 PWM PST fans for $30. While we only need three fans to cool the radiator, the additional two fans are optional and can be used as case fans. In addition to the low single fan price, pressure optimized and quiet motor, these fans can be daisy chained together to help with cable management. For soft tubing, Watercool Heat Killer EPDM 10mm inner diameter, 13mm outer diameter in black will be used for its high elasticity that allows for tight bending radii. One meter of tubing is $5. Before installing the radiator into the case, we will first cut and install the return run from the radiator to the reservoir. From here, we can secure the motherboard into the case. Then a PCIe 4.0 riser cable, followed by the video card with the water block. Next, we can drop in the reservoir combo unit and then mount it into the case with the Arctic P12 120 millimeter fans with 30 millimeter radiator screws. This is when daisy chaining comes in handy. Rather than three separate fan headers to connect, we only have one. 
where we can plug it in directly into the motherboard. The rest of the tube runs are next. Loop order does not affect performance beyond perhaps one degree. The main considerations are making the run short in distance, but also giving enough slack to move the tube around a bit. Adding another radiator can improve cooling, but more radiators will also mean more fittings, more runs, more fans, and more cost. This single 40 millimeter thick triple 120 millimeter fan radiator will perform well with these components. The matte black tubing is made from natural rubber EPVM. The tubing is both strong and elastic. It is a practical alternative to hard tubing as it's maintenance free, durable, and reusable. The fill is next, so let's connect the Molex power for the pump and put a jumper on the main 24 pin cable. For the liquid, distilled water is perfectly suitable. This is water cooling. To safeguard the loo for long term use, we will add biocide in the form of Primo Chill Liquid Utopia. This 15 milliliter bottle can be used for multiple loops, and with the distilled water, costs a total of $18. For testing, the barrel 40 mm copper radiator is cooled by three Arctic P12 120 mm fans at 65% speed. The barrel 18 watt D5 pump at 30% speed. At this combined RPM level, the approximate and average noise was recorded to be between 35 and 40 decibels. To obtain the results, 3D Mark Speedway Stress Test, Prime 95, and the benchmark for Cyberpunk 2077 were with the Be Quiet case completely enclosed with ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. Shown on screen are the CPU core and GPU core and memory temperatures for Prime 95 and Speedway benchmarks. During Prime 95, the CPU temperature was 49 degrees Celsius, and during Speedway, the GPU temperature was 46 degrees Celsius, and the memory temperature was 62 degrees Celsius. It is possible to further improve temperatures by simply increasing the speed on the fans, or leave them at 65% and enjoy the quietness. For Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark 1440p 2K, ultra settings, ray tracing with DLSS quality, GPU power usage was 312 watts, FPS was 66, and GPU and memory temperatures were 44 and 54 degrees Celsius respectively. The same settings but with overdrive mode path tracing, power usage was 324 watts, FPS was 46, and GPU and memory temperatures were comparable at 45 and 55 degrees Celsius respectively. So there you have it, a complete custom water cooling solution for under $350. The parts are quality, reusable, and the performance is on par with water cooling loops many times its price. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Please click on the bell for a notification when the next episode airs. Click on the links here for more videos like this including video card and water cooling component teardowns, unboxings, and thermal testing for water-cooled PC builds. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.